Assalamu alaikum dear, so we are here with a new discussion, a new, new lecture on the social and historical context of the play and resources. Uh, it is one of the important factors to discuss, uh, factors to discuss that a doll's house is written in the time where, when the world was, the, especially the Europe, uh, was changing politically, socially, economically, and technology. Uh, what was the reaction of the people, the government at that time, uh, how it was received by the audience this day, and what were the political and social demands of the time of the people, especially women, uh, when this play was written. And to some extent, it was, uh, although there were many other factors that, that contributed to the social change and breaking the patriarchal powers, but Adult's House is also one challenge to this patriarchal social and uh, strict uh, uh, situation in Norway, particularly and in Europe generally. Let's discuss some of the important social, political, historical uh, contexts. Uh, first of all, written by Henrik Ebsen in 1879, Adult's House shocked and divided critics across Europe with its depiction of a woman struggling to survive in a man's world. Now, this was something very strange. In the play, was written at that time, you know, when people watched it, especially critics, the people, those who understand that intellectual, uh, they were astonished to see that there was another voice, although there were some other voices of women regarding uh, women rights. But it was another literary voice uh, where uh, uh, it was shown that how women, Nora, is struggling to survive in a male dominant world. And Nora's rejection of the ideal family life, which was a very shocking, controversial decision taken by Nora, are of the women at that time. Uh, after the first stage production in 1879, the opinions of audience were also divided. Some people hated, some people liked it. The play caused an immediate sensation, sparking debate and controversy. So much so that invitations to social gatherings at the time would often include the note. You are requested not to mention Ibsen's Doll's House. Now, it was very strange. Uh, it was so controversial that people requested other people not to discuss Doll's House in social gatherings. And it was written intentionally. Uh, this play usually focuses, this play normally and generally, it is a feminist play and it focuses on women's rights. So feminism and women's rights at that time uh, was on the peak. You know, it, the cry uh, for women's rights was not, uh, uh, you know, sparkled or uh, generated uh, uh, by, by, by Henry Gibson. It was uh, earlier, different NGOs and organizations, women organizations, they were fighting for their rights. In 1879, when Epson wrote Lord's house, a wife was not legally permitted to borrow money without her husband's consent. On her wedding day, a woman's transition from living under the authority of her father to under that of her husband. It was just the authority was seen. At first, uh, women was dependent on father and after marriage, it became dependent on the husband. Epson based the play on the true story of a woman named Laura Keeler, who, like Laura, illegally borrowed a sum of money to save her husband. It is a true story. However, unlike Laura, Laura Fraun was discovered, she then had her children taken away from her and was committed to a mental asylum. Although Nora was shown that she, she slams the door and she gets out of her room, she beats her husband and children and she wants to discover herself. But in the real, in the real story, uh, uh, real women Laura faced a very harsh ending, tragic ending. The issue of women's rights was already very prominent in non every years before Epson focused on the issue and women had the force behind several changes in the women's rights organization gaining momentum. Throughout the 19th century, poverty had already forced women to the workplace early in the 19th century, and the government had passed laws protecting and governing women's employment. Nearly five decades before Epson's play, by the middle of the century, Norwegian women were granted the same legal protection fees they provided to male children. But, but, still there was a problem. Still, it was a male dominant world. Wages were very few for women. Uh, jobs were very selected. They were, in one way or the other way, uh, they were dependent on men. 
women who are permitted inheritance rights and were successful in petitioning for the rights to the university education only few years after the first performance of those house. But many of the protections provided to women were aimed at the lower economic classes, employment opportunities for women who were limited to low paying domestic jobs, teaching and clerical uh, works. Middle class women such as Nora noticed few of these who were not because it was the institution of marriage itself that restricted the freedom of middle class women. Universal suffrage was eventually achieved in uh, 1913, making Norway the first country in Europe to have equal voting rights for men and women. Now, it was all the social context. Now, what was the political and personal freedom, the political context, and how the 1918th century was now she took decisions and took the influences. Norway was freed from Danish control in 1814. The subsequent treaty of Kiel presented Norway to Sweden in the Union of the crown which lasted until 1945. Therefore, at the time that the Dolph's House was written, Norway was a part of the Union with Sweden. The constitution was crafted that gave Norway the devolved power, and Norwegian began to discover their own cultural identity, albeit as a part of the Norwegian Union. Absent the composer uh, Edward Grieg and the artist Edward Munch, all contributed to this new cultural identity of women and men in Norwegian context. It is therefore understandable that issues involving freedom, both political and personal freedom, were important in the minds of the region. This cultural change and cultural discovering cultural identity, freedom of their own, it's always denied that you have believed in human rights, stating that instead they believe in human rights. And that the story of adults' house was about personal freedom and independence of human, not of women. Language also began to play its part in this development of new Norwegian identity following the split with Denmark in 1840 and New Norwegian dialect was developed. That's all the language of the country which eventually developed into the Nynors, uh, which is spoken in Norway today. However, until the early 20th century, the official language was still explored. The language of the town, which at Old South was written in a dialect of Asian because it was a rich language dialect at the time, is the whole native language which was developed. Now, the marriage and family life of that time, the 19th century, family was organized along traditional patriarchal lines. It was already understood, men dominant society. The patriarchal idea, ideal was supported and reinforced by the social structure wherein women had little over political and economical power, wherein they were economically, socially, and psychologically dependent on men, and especially on the institution of marriage and motherhood. The idea of bourgeois respectability prevailed in the 19th century. But it never went unchallenged, and by the time Epson wrote his own challenge to this patriarchal power towards the end of the century, a new era of crisis and uncertainty regarding all things conventional had already begun because Europe was changing, while the world was changing, it was a flux. The position of women was an especially volatile issue because the patriarchal ideology underlay the entire social, political, and economic structure. If women would have autonomy, the whole world structure of society would have been. Reimagine and the world would have to be rebuilt. It was an apocalyptic idea that threw many intellectuals, but terrified the ruling and middle class, so that each move in the direction of women suffered. Now, revised marriage laws and advances in women education felt like the end of the world, and it was the need of the day. The last decades of the 19th century had already begun to feel like the end of the world. Anyway, the Western world was about to enter into a period of unprecedented change, social, political, economic, cultural, and scientific. Were there. No one knew what exactly was coming, but a great many looked toward with it uh, with a mixture of hope and dread both. When Nora slams the door of a doll's house in the end of the play, shutting herself out of the only world she has known, the, the home, and stepping into the future that is unknown and therefore both promising and threatening to her, the sound resonates with ap apocalyptic tremors of Epson times. Thank you so much for listening to this lecture.